let's take a step back and let's talk about fundamentals. And specifically, I'm talking about experience mapping because it's like a skill set number one. If you're a UX designer, if you don't map experiences or journeys as they are, then you can't really improve anything. You're just doing ideation and product design. That's what we're going to start with. I'm going to share with you a course which I ran with one of my colleagues to upskill my previous design team back in the day. And so I'm going to kickstart this maybe two episode or three episode series. I'm going to invite a guest, a special guest, and I'm going to show you how I would quickly experience map a specific journey a specific experience the experience of using let's say an app or something like that and show you how i would use it to improve or how i would use that information to then take it forward and then make an experience better and so back in the day i asked some of the junior designers i worked with of what sort of issues they face when let's say running ux efforts ux workshops experience mapping efforts and and so forth and i kind of grouped them into preparation facilitation insights capture and synthesis and this is exactly what you would go through when you would experience map anyways because you would need to plan for a workshop prepare some sort of questions facilitate it you know how do you engage with people how do you challenge them how do you dig deeper how do you conserve your own energy energy how do you wrap up the session when you how do you capture the insights while you ask questions because sometimes you know it could be one person experience mapping or it could be a team how do you divide those bits how do you focus on the right stuff so you don't take the breath you also get the depth in and you can explore it and lastly how do you synthesize those themes how do you arrive at some conclusions how do you use it where do you focus to go next and that's really important that's probably the most important bit because if you do experience mapping you do it for a reason and let's talk about what is experience mapping as you can see these are the examples from nielsen norman group it could be empathy map which you would arrive from talking to the users in the interviews it could be a journey map which is basically a specific scenario plus the goals it could be experience map or it could be service blueprint whichever you pick it has to be meaningful but in this case what i'm going to focus most is customer journey map and experience map you know generally you could call all of it experience mapping you could call it ux mapping you could call it there's just a lot of ways people skin the cat in reality it doesn't really matter as long as you map what sort of steps or phases user goes through in s is journey you capture enough detail for you to make meaningful insights and decisions and play the back to your team and play back to let's say your stakeholders so you can actually use it as a communication tool and that's super important you want to understand what do the users go through what their needs are what their pain points are that's the why the most basic form journey mapping starts by compiling a series of user goals actions in the timeline skeleton that's as simple as it is. That's all the journey map or experience map is. This quote is from one of my fellow designers and they're saying that you want to understand the existing journeys, you want to understand what the users go through as early as so you can actually make better decisions, ideate on the solutions and so forth. And so if we look at the examples, if you just search on Google, let's say journey map or experience map, you're going to get a lot of different examples like that. If we take a scale here, this would be a bit more higher fidelity. As you can see at the lowest fidelity, the experience map could look like just like that. There is just a few lanes, a few different points, which I'm going to dig deeper just in a minute. This would be enough for you to do a journey map or experience map and leave it at that. You could even do it in Excel, like in this example, for example. You could use Miro, what I'm using to present right now, and just make it, if, let's say, with post-it notes, make it a little bit more presentable, right? On the other end of the spectrum, we have these almost like an infographic like experience map for example this is pregnancy experience map going through the timeline as you can see everything here is a timeline here is one is with the actual persona a specific user segment and how they go through that specific service or that specific experience at what time of the day as you can see from 8 a.m to 7 p.m and you are going to discover that there is a lot of information you can map out that way it's all used for you to understand better the user life cycles for you to communicate what are the key areas of pain points so let's let's d dig into this for example the very simplest example here i found you can see what we capture is action thinking feeling pain points opportunities to me the most important always part is at what stage at what action 
are what pain points and where do we have the most pain points. In that case, you can kind of guide the team and say, hey, I think we could focus on the interview because I can see that there are quite a few pain points here. And you, you can imagine the bigger the map, the more pain points you might capture, the deeper you dig, the more actual information you can capture. And it's up to you to decide how much is enough. But let me give you a basic toolkit so you can get started. Talking about ingredients, I have four essential ingredients for an experience or journey map. One of them is always to understand the journey. And for example, in this case, if we talk about oil drilling and exploration, you know, how would you approach that? What if you, for example, would want to enhance how people go by their days as oil rig engineers? You would want to talk to business representative of, or someone who's close to the actual users to understand on a very high level what are the key steps, where is the scope? Are you gonna focus on all of it from end to end, from the moment they are on a helicopter being shipped or being flown into the rig and up until they return home? Or is it just the specific day when there is, let's say, an issue while drilling for oil. You would talk to the people, you would try to understand what exactly on a high level, where is the opportunity to improve it or discover it. And then you would kind of like map out on a high level, what could it be? And it doesn't matter if you're right or wrong, because you can always go about changing it. You always need to consider who's your user. So what I call players, for example, and if we're talking about that end to end life cycle of discovering oil, key players could be that it's engineering, geo research, mineral and land rights. If you're experienced mapping and you want depth, you would want to engage with, let's say, one or two personas, one or two user segments. It depends on what stage you are. But let's say if I would just want to map out first engineering, then geo research and mineral rights, then you piece those different segments together into a really large service blueprint in the end, right? So you need to decide who you're targeting, what sort of segment you're going to go after. The more specific you are, the more deeper you can go but it doesn't mean that you must be specific. Again, you need to work with your team to understand what exactly you're after. The third ingredient is the phases. Again, if you know what you are after and you know that we, for example, are now choosing to go after our oil rig engineers, we probably are going to go through several steps of what we do. It's kind of like if you are a designer, you would have a planning, let's say you would have preparation for the session for experience mapping, you would have actual facilitation, and then you have synthesis. The same exact idea applies here too. And the last one is to decide what swim lanes you want to define. So as you can see, we have phases up on top, so these are like very high level phases in the journey. And we have swim lanes on the left hand side, which is basically what are we capturing? There is some things what I always go for, for example, um, pain points and opportunities and actions are a no brainer. Thinking and feeling could be harder to capture because you need to build rapport, you need for people to trust you to share those things. So it's also questionable if you want to capture that. Sometimes you want to say the, you know, instead of thinking, you could name it the whys. So, you know, why they do what they do and what do they think while doing it? So there's maybe it's reasoning instead of thinking. It's up to you how to do that. And so my go to the must in the swim lanes, usually when experience mapping or preparing for it is always actions. So specifically what stuff they take pain points. It's all the bottlenecks issues. It's something you can improve insights or why we do what we do, the reasoning and opportunities, meaning sometimes people and users have their own ideas of what to improve. If you are actually running if the users always trust their expertise because they've done it, they've been there, they have their pains and they have their frustrations. So just capture it. That's the whole idea about mapping. It's mapping out and charting the territory which you don't know anything about, but they know a lot and trust their insights. Now other swim lanes considering to add, I've seen a lot of different designers use them in different contexts. It's up to you to decide which ones is most appropriate, but always pick those if you need it, if it adds value, because otherwise it's pointless. It's not about optics. It's not about showcasing that, hey, let's say they use mobile phone. If you're not going to use it anywhere, it doesn't really matter. But if you are actually going to use to inform your next decisions, 
I would advise you to use it. Just to showcase an example of that, let's say for emotional journey, here I have this map, and as you can see, red and greens represents you know, a pain point, a gain point, and this is an emotional journey if it goes down. So you could also represent it with smiley faces, with a chart going up and down, things of that nature, almost like a roller coaster. So then you can convey where the opportunity for improvement is. Channels, so mobile, you know, maybe a specific system, maybe they use uh, Excel to crunch data, for example, maybe they use mobile phone to call their moms, you can capture that as well. Raw quotes, is an amazing thing. I love to capture raw quotes. You can basically use it as evidence and it's evidence 101 is super powerful because it's not just you retelling secondhand. Dependence is quite vague. It could be anything, but it's basically everything what doesn't fit, but should be considered and you find interesting. You might talk to a person and say, hey, how do you do this? And then they say, hmm, but I also do this on something else. And even if it's not in your scope, perhaps it's worth capturing. It could be system platforms, people, you name it, any touch point, any value, any property, which would you find interesting. And maybe there is something to it, maybe something to discover further. Sometimes you might be discovering an about to experience map foreign territory. Sometimes you have to do a lot of guesswork, but chances are you don't need to. Before you engage with your users, you can read the book in a weekend if you want to about oil drilling. For example, I read in just a couple of weeks knowing that I'm going to engage with the users to experience map and the project is going to kickstart. I read a few books, even watch movie for Iron Horizon because it gave me an understanding of what actual people would deal with on a very rough level. So I can actually, you know, level of them. I can ask questions they understand. It means doing homework, but it's a necessary homework. I would never ever go experience map something, have no idea what you are, because your questions are going to be way too vague, way too stupid. They're not going to be focused enough. You're not going to know where to focus and you're going to have to repeat experience mapping again and again and again until you get it. So it's going to mean workshops and unnecessary follow ups and quite pricey efforts for you to onboard yourself and understand their lives and how to improve it better. Other examples is industry reports, you can just Google about specific journey, you can go on Quora, you can go on social media, you can l find blogs on different bits, you can go on YouTube, you can find how people are doing what if you let's say you're gonna go and improve auto mechanics experience, just go on YouTube and say, auto mechanics day in life or something like that. And just to show you where I arrived, just reading books, content, Quora, stuff like that. Even before I engaged with actual people, this is what they did. I literally went and Googled, created a glossary of what each term means. Infographics on Deepwater Horizon, because I knew I'm going to target a specific issue to do with security while drilling, which is a super exciting project. I can't tell you anything about it. A lot of YouTube watching. I did a lot of different report scanning, drones, additive manufacturing, you know, things of that nature. What's actually cracking in the industry and based off all the stuff I could find, not even engaging with the users, I started experience mapping of how it goes from very first engagement, where geo researchers, let's say, go through, and then we, you know, what we do, what we use, what sort of tools we use, what we think, or what, how we rationalize their decisions from different specific roles, which are not yet users, not personas, roles, how they engage with that. So I have the research and discovery drilling, I have well operations and what happens and there's everything from legal to mechanical engineering to the research. As you can see, I did my research in just a couple of weeks. I put this to prepare for my engagement. I cannot show you what I did next, but what I did next was literally when I was running a workshop with geo researchers and I showed it to them and I said, this is what I understand about your journey, your experience day to day. And then in the end, what we really needed is just how we do the contouring, meaning, you know, the actual geology of processing and finding different permeations in the rock, in a permeable rock, to see where is the actual pocket of potential oil and gas. I then expanded it and started from scratch, just like I shown you in the examples before, like this, and just spread out contouring into different phases, where let's see how we prepare it, who they engage with, how they action it, what's the handover, things of that nature, and then just decided on swim lanes and literally went bit by bit going through the experience mapping exercise. 
And that's as simple as that. In the part two, I'm going to show you what questions do I ask and how do I ask it? How do I probe? How do I try to understand a bit deeper? And I'm going to have a guest as well so we can actually map out together a specific journey. But before that, a lot of you might ask, well, is it as simple as that? Like what tools should I use? You know, if you run it remotely, you can use Sketch, you can use Figma, you can use Miro. Miro is irreplaceable when it comes to experience mapping. For example, this looks like it was done either with Mural or Miro. It doesn't really matter, but you could achieve something like that and capture stuff while talking on a video call with your users remotely. Think about what's most appropriate. To me, the best way is to get in one room and just map out different bits. And I've shown you before some of my templates, which I use, I just print out with the basic swim lanes. I have a template which is a definite set, like a go-to template for this specific mapping exercise. I print it out on A2, I use it on a wall, and I ask people to put out different post-it notes or I capture it myself if people don't feel like it. I'm gonna leave down below a link. It's part of my other design thinking and UX mapping and UX exploration discovery template set. So you can download them all and just print out, use them. In the next episode, I'm gonna show you how to prepare what to consider, how to prepare your audience, how to actually physically run it. If you like this video, of course, give a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. Hit that bell notification so you know exactly when the next video comes out. And until next time.